Hey guys, this is the second part of the sample mounting and polishing procedure tutorial. On the second part, I will show you how to mount the samples in the longitudinal cross section. If you haven't seen the introduction, please go and watch it. It's very important. Um, let's see, let's resume uh, from when we left up last time. Now, as I said earlier, we have four types of samples here and these will be mounted in the longitudinal cross section and will be mounted inside epoxy actually. I can't afford these samples going into too much pressure and the rest of the samples actually will be mounted in conductament. So the, these three guys will be mounted in conductament. So let's start with the first group of samples, the ones that will be going into epoxy. Put these away. So um, you need several things to uh, make an epoxy mount. And all of these things can be found in this room. If you can't find them, uh, you can ask Bill. Uh, maybe we're running out of them and he'll be happy to get you more. And uh, we need a cup, a popsicle stick, of course, the resin and a hardener. You need a curing cup or two in my case. And you need a scale to measure everything uh, by weight. Oh, and the other thing that I, uh, you need for this kind of uh, mount is a conductive filler powder. This is, is different than the conductivate. It's just the powder that makes the epoxy slightly conductive. Uh, okay, so uh, let's mix the epoxy. So let me grab my scale over here and uh, tear it. My cup on. And there you go, it's teared. And I will add the epoxy now. And any epoxy that uh, you use will have in the back a the amount, the, the actual ratio. Uh, the resin to hardener ratio by weight, of course. So let me add a little more. Okay, there you go. A little more. There you go. 50.23 grams. Let's see. 50.23. Okay. And, and in this case, this, this particular epoxy has a ratio of 100 to 12 resin to hardener. So however many grams I add of the resin, I need to multiply that by 12 and divide it by 100 to get the, the, the hardener uh, amount. So that gives me 6.02. So I will tear this again and I add my, it goes back to zero hopefully, there you go, and add my 6.02 grams of hardener. You don't need that much. Okay. Three. Six point, went over a little bit, not too bad. Um, okay, and, and there you go. You have your epoxy mix, and you mix this for about three minutes or something like that. And that's what I'm about to do. So, be right back. Okay, now that it's mixed, uh, we have to add the conductive filler. Uh, I usually add, I don't know, 80, 80, 20, so 20% 20 conductive fillers. If, if I add about 50 grams, I'm just, I'm going to add if I had about around 50 grams of epoxy, 60 or something like that, I'm just, uh, this doesn't have to be exact, uh, which are about 20 maybe, let's see, no, maybe 30. Uh, if you add too much of this, it will become really thick, therefore it won't fill as well, uh, but if you add too little, you can end up with a clear epoxy, and the clear epoxies don't look very good under the microscope. That is, it, if you make it black with this conductive filler, filler, you'll have much better contrast between your sample and the epoxy. So you, you want to add a little bit uh, for it to be fairly dark. If um, it, 
to yeah, that, that's that's the main point of uh, that I like adding this powder. It will never be as conductive as the conductamin. Uh, it doesn't matter how much you add, but it, it sometimes it helps under the SEM. Uh, you usually do other things to get away with the with the SEM images when you have epoxy, uh, and I'll talk about that later. Um, but that's about it. I think this, this is this is ready in about eight hours. This will be as hard as it will be just a hard block. And uh, now let's take care of the samples. I have my samples right here, and uh, we need to log it. We need to make a uh, a record of what the puck is and what's in the puck because we have many samples. And if someone else grabs this puck, they want to know. Uh, what's in the puck and actually you might lose track of what's in the puck so you, you need to log and that's why we have this this log right here it's also in this room and this is for 2014 and 2015 and what you have in here is an empty form and you will fill in everything that's in this sheet you have a, a material information what kind of material it is do you have niobium 310 magnesium diboride whatever superconductor you have uh, then the project, the billet number, any, uh, you see there's a lot of information that you want to fill in as much as you can. So wh whoever grabs this, this sheet later on uh, will know exactly what the puck is. In my case, I filled in two sheets right here. I'll go through the first one. Uh, oh, actually the first thing you need to write is, is the puck ID. And you see the year, the month, and the number. Well, the number is just whichever next next come uh, whichever number comes next in in the logbook. So this this one was 36 and 37, and I filled it in. You don't need to really know what uh, all these details. Uh, just if when you have a sample, make sure you you fill in as many details as you can. As you can see here, I have my my drawing, my sketch, and what they're going to be looking like. Uh, and and remember, this has to be this what you're looking in. This uh, diagram is a, is because the samples are going to be sitting at the bottom of the puck. This is actually a, it, when you'd be looking at the face of the puck. It's going to be a mirrored version of that. In this case, there's no much problem because I'm doing up and down. But if you're if you have left if you have orientation of your samples left and right, you need to make sure that the ones in the right are going to be in the left once you flip it. This will all make sense later on. But in my case, I have here. 600 uh, so, some different heat treatments that were applied to these wires and What I'm going to do them is what I'm going to do now is set them here on my desk uh, Before I put them in inside the, the cups to add the Epoxy so let me organize my samples in, on here on this piece of paper uh, So and then I'll show you how to put them in here. I'm going to organize them on this piece of paper uh, exactly how they look in my logbook, and then I'll transfer them to the uh, cups. So be right back. Okay, so I have my samples here. I've laid them out in the same order that I want to lay them out in the pucks, in the same order that it is in my uh, log sheet. Now, just when you're doing this, be careful. Don't mix them up. Of course, that's uh, that uh, goes without saying. But let's uh, let me show you how we'll go about putting them in here. It's, it's, it's a little tricky, especially because these are longitudinal cross sections. They're not as easy to get uh, to get the samples perfectly flat all the way. And when you're polishing, you know, if if, if you polish too much, your sample's gone. So longitudinal cross sections are a little more tricky than the transverse cross sections I'll do later. So uh, I personally like to use. Um, to use uh, a little bit of, especially for these longitudinal cross sections, a little bit of crazy glue to hold the samples in place and make sure they don't move when uh, when I pour the epoxy on top of them. Okay, let me jump in here for a second because I was talking way too much. I was wasting a lot of time. The first thing that I need to say here is that notice how, how little crazy glue I am adding. I'm just putting it on the ends of the sample. I just wanted to hold the samples in place. Although, uh, in hand, hindsight, I think crazy glue was a little bit of overkill. If you do you use crazy glue, be careful of how much you add. Uh, we've had some people in the past add too much crazy glue, and then the epoxy didn't fill in. The samples looked terrible. They they were they were useless. 
you might be actually better off using other means of holding the samples in place. Maybe a piece of double-sided tape can do the trick. Sometimes even just drops of epoxy work. But anyways, once I've added all these tiny little drops of uh, crazy glue, I can transfer the samples one by one slowly without losing, obviously without losing track of their order. Also following the, the, the sketch on the log. And I know this, this part requires a little bit of hand skill. You have to be patient. But ultimately what I want to do is to hold the samples in place. So, so when I pour the epoxy in, it, they don't move around, potentially changing their order. That, that would be terrible. I, I would lose track of my samples and then the results wouldn't make any sense. Uh, but once I have them all aligned, all in place, and they're all fixed, I can put the lids on and then slowly pour the epoxy in. Not all the way to the top. You want to leave some room at the top, about a quarter of an inch. You, all, you don't want the samples to be too tall or else they won't, fall, they won't fit in some of the microscopes, especially the SEM. And uh, that's about it. I think at this point I have to wait for the samples to cure for about about eight hours okay so after about eight hours these should be already completely cured and uh, this of course is just a block of epoxy so we don't need it anymore I'm gonna toss it out and we need to get these guys out of here and it sometimes it's kind of hard to get them out of there so I'll, I'll just use some pliers to take the, the lid out. Here we go the lid. And uh, go. And now uh, sometimes I use a screwdriver or something to get them out of the there you go there you go and of course you want to keep track of uh, the numbers the puck numbers these these are not the same in my case I, I had to write it a, a number of here I don't know if you see it uh, but not now I need to actually label them to to uh, so that anybody could tell that these are the pucks that I put in my log. So what uses these uh, marking, yeah, markers, I guess, uh, they're in this room as well. And you will just write down the puck number and any more information that you would want on the puck. Right now I'm just concerned about the puck number. So this one is uh, puck 36, sorry. And there you go. So 15 for the year, 01 for the month, 36 because it's puck number 36. And I'll do the same for the other one. And there you go. So I got my puck number 36 and my puck number 37. And if you see this axis right here, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of that. We'll polish that in, uh, out a little bit. But what you have is your samples right here and in exactly the same orientation that I put them in my log. All right, guys, that's it for the longitudinal cross-section mounting part of the video. Next, we'll do the transverse cross-section mounting over here. However, you've seen that and you want to see how the longitudinal cross-section has been or polished, you can click here. But for now, that's it. I'll see you later.